All right, guys. Welcome to to welcome to um. Yes, this is Thursday. Thursday edition of Driving with Styles. Hope everybody's now having a better day than they were yesterday after you know that game. Hopefully, got that all out of our system. So, today, I said we was going to talk about football. So, we got, what, about 30 minutes, maybe 35 minutes, depending on how bad this traffic is, to talk about some football. So, yesterday I ended on um, – I end up, I can't remember now. Well, I, I think I no. I think I end on the defensive line. I think I t- talked about Kevin Joseph earlier. <clears throat> it's it's gonna be interesting because I, like I said before, um, I played with Anwar, but I really don't know his coaching style, which really probably comes from Coach Stoops more than. Coach White, because like I said yesterday, we're going to be a little more dynamic up front with Pascal putting his hand in the ground. And, and I'm interest, uh, interested to see how many games we run, which games are um, are you know, I probably need to do a Watching with styles. I probably need to go in the game, the film room for this because you can run like last year we ran some slants, but I don't think we ran slants to um, penetrate the line of scrimmage and get in gaps. I think we ran it more just to mess up um, blocking schemes and actually um, gases a few times. But I think with Phil and and um and Pascal with the hands on the ground, I think they could potentially um, penetrate the voids or the gaps in the offensive line and and cause some more time for losses when we run our games. we we'll, I think we will run more twists. Um I think I, I'm not sure I'm not sure if Coach Weiss philosophy, but I can definitely see us running some more zone blitzes, run and pass blitzes, because there is a difference between a run blitz and a pass blitz. Um, because honestly, for me, we are, I know we are basically 3-4, but we run a lot of 4-3. Um, I, I don't know how would I wonder if anybody could get those stats, but I wonder how much we run um, a base 4-3 compared to a real 3-4. Um, because we're going to be so athletic at line. Uh, like I said yesterday, you can always put Josh in pass coverage, which is going to be interesting. I, I really want I really would like to know if that's even in the the um, the minds of the coaches because I'm sure it's in the playbook because I'm sure they don't run that their guys been able to run. But I'm sure there's some stuff that Coach Stoops has in there that he hasn't run, he hasn't ran since he's been at Kentucky that he probably can be able to run now. With the, with, the, with the kind of athleticism we have in that front three. Um, and I think we, we're more, um, we should be more, what's the word, more fluid as far as having Jordan Wright and Boogie in pass coverage. So, um, you're, you're not trying to hide Pascal into the boundary. 
you can you can those guys don't have to switch sides of the field really. Uh, I think Jordan and Boogie could play wide side and boundary, which is nice uh, because it, it doesn't give the offensive coordinator a chance to exploit that that curl flat into the boundary, which coaches want to do anyway because it's a shorter throw. So I think with um, with having Wright and Boogie now as our uh, three, four linebackers on the outside, I think we'll be better equipped to eliminate that that first and ten um, easy yards, three, four yards, um, hitches, outs in the boundary. Um, but I guess offense could run some more runs to the boundary with we're having a outside linebacker a little lighter in the in the ass in the boundary. But I think those guys can hold up against the run pretty well. Not really worried about that, I guess. Um, but it's gonna be interesting with that with that defense. I I would really I really would want to see us run some more true three four schemes because I think we have the linebackers to truly run it now where uh, it's going to be interesting because I think we're, man, we're so deep at linebacker it's crazy now you guys know how now let's go to the other side of the field I can talk defense all day, but I can also talk offense all day, too, I guess. Um, I feel, you know, I, I can say that. I feel better about the defense because they're so, you know, I can say that. I feel good about both. That's why I, I, I have us pick that win eleven game. Um, and honestly, I see us at the worst, the floor being nine. Um, everything starts up front, and in the past we were manhandled on both sides of the ball. Last, I mean, if you think about it. Three years ago, um, we had to almost max protect when we passed the ball. That's why um, uh, the type that everybody wanted to see. Just the ball from I can't think of his name. Comrade. Everybody was everybody were, was uh, were bitching about Comrade not getting enough throws, but he had to stay in the block a lot of time. This year, well, last year, and before the injury to Terry, we didn't have the Max Pro. And actually, with Sawyer, too, the Florida game, we didn't Max Pro that much. I think our front five is is more than capable of handling. I was, I, I'm going to say all of the SEC fronts. Georgia has a really good one. Interesting to see how Florida um, rebounds with losing both their defensive ends. But um, and Missouri usually has always has a good front four, but we manhandled this year and last year, to be honest with you. Um, it's going to be interesting because now we can leak that tight end out on pass routes because he doesn't have – to even chip the defense in because we have two tackles who are really, really good. We are definitely more dynamic with with Terry, but I think we will be fine with Sawyer because he hopefully will be 100% healthy and not have all the ailments that he had uh, last season, which I think he... <laughs> He might um, 
you might be able to tell people the difference between playing in SEC and playing in what conference is the is Troy? And that's not conference you gonna say. What con- whatever conference that is. The talent level and the the um, the size is huge in the SEC. People don't understand. Like most of these conferences have athletic defenses, defensive fronts, and defenses in general. But the difference is SEC has guys who are 30, 40 pounds heavier with the same athletic ability. So when someone hits you, it carries a bigger punch than when you get hit in some of these other conferences. That's really the big difference. So hopefully Sawyer is back 100% because he can throw it. We, we saw when he was healthy. Um, Sawyer has to protect the ball a little more. Um, that might have been a byproduct of being new to the system been new to the receivers, not having that um, that comfort level with knowing where they're going to be and where and them knowing where what Sawyer's thinking when he's in the pocket. Because that interception against Florida hurts. I know um, that just popped in my mind. Interception to land when we were up. When we were in, what, inside at least a 15, might have been inside the 10. And he threw that that fade route to about midfield and gave him a short field. That that really hurt the momentum of that game because it gave Florida some more. Um, so decision making, protecting the ball is huge. Uh, we have mm, can I say that? Can I say we have the best running back room in the conference? That that'll be hard to say. We have one of the best running back rooms in the conference. We have experience. We have three different types of running backs, which is huge. Uh, like I said last year, um, if you follow me, You know, I'm a big fan of A.J. Rose. I like his patience. I like the way he runs the ball. Um, And before the season started last year, I I was expecting a big year from him, but obviously the scheme changed. I'm going back to that. Although I can't say it it would be as many yards because they're probably going to use all three running backs. Um, So he's probably going to get less touches, but I really want to see him in the open field. I really want to see him in space and uh, use the skill set that differenti- differentiates himself from smoking C-Rod. Uh, I think the coaches understand and trust, not understand, but they trust C-Rod to be definitely that short yardage back. Uh, he's also a good blocker. As well as AJ, Smoke has a little more, I'm going to say, quick twitch, uh, a little more explosive. I'm not sure he's faster, but he has that that quick speed. Uh, Rose is, I don't know if Rose is a long strider, but he's a little, he, he is Le'Veon Bell-ish. He tries to set up his blocks with his patience. Uh, which I'm sure the, the offensive line appreciates. And the great thing about last year, like I said last year, is that we have some extra plays. But I would also like to see us run some more two tight ends. I know we run it but a little more and not run it as for rundown, I like to see us um, stack them on the weak side. Maybe have a closed formation and uh, have two receivers on one side, a slot 
an outside receiver, then have both tight ends stacked on the backside and run some old uh, NFL route combinations backside with the tight ends versus a small corner and a safety. There's a lot of a lot of very good route combinations you can run backside to, especially when it's closed, to um to take advantage of a corner because I'm gonna just tell you use those corners, especially in college, backside don't um they respect tight ends that much. And they tend to get lazy. And with Upshaw as that flex tight end, I, I think we can we can get some out of them uh, with a close formation, backside, with some good route combinations uh, against that backside corner. It's probably going to be a little lazy. Probably looking play side to see if any crossing routes are coming. You can, I mean, there's tons of things. And wide receiver, like I was, I said last year we were going to be good at it, and I think we we proved that the first two games that we we're better than what people expected. But um, it's interesting to 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 read on Twitter that my man Isaiah Epps has been his name has not been mentioned as much as I thought it would. I thought last spring he showed signs. And I'm going to tell you, there's, like I think I said yesterday or one of these days, there is nothing like losing the game. You lose this game because of injury, you sit on the sideline. And if you use your time wisely, your perspective is different. And it can actually help you. Uh, when you finally get yourself back on the field healthy, there are things that you can see from the sideline that you can't see when you're in there. There's, there's, um, there's things you can see the defense is doing, how they attack formations, how they attack receivers. You can devise ways to conquer that defense or attack or whatever. And become a better player. So I honestly see that, that potential from Isaiah Epps. Now, obviously, I heard he's not participating in the screen. I hope that's just because they know what he can do and he's, and it's not a lingering injury deal. Because I think he's an X factor. You pair him with Ali and Thomas and Allen, I think we're pretty good at, at the wide receiver position. Now, obviously, we don't have any history, any um, – we don't have a 1,000-yard receiver come back, but uh, you also have to look at what happened last year and the change in scheme. I think maybe Ali might have had 800 yards last year if, if Terry's quarterback or 600 and maybe uh, Lynn has a grand. You never know. But um, I like that room. And like I've said before, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Tay-Tay come and maybe offer that deep threat, uh, which will make everybody, you always need a deep threat in the receiving room even if you're not throwing it to him often, it makes the secondary honest. It makes those shallow routes, uh, those windows bigger because the the safeties in the corner has to respect the deep ball. So it's going to be interesting to to see. It's almost like we have a new offensive coordinator because now we have some more packages and now teams don't know what we're going to do because I think we're going to open up more last year, kind of like when Graham was at Cincinnati. 
with Terry. Uh, and now we have some extra plays. We have a, an extra playbook sort of, uh, or an addendum to our playbook. And it's going to, I'm, I'm interested to see how Grand um, implements those those new plays with Terry. Now, obviously, Sawyer probably can't run him as much, but he's athletic enough. He's not as explosive, but you don't have to be explosive. Just got to keep the team honest. Um, so I'm telling you, I, I've been excited about this spring football season during the season. And because I knew what we had coming back. I knew the amount of talent and amount of experience we had coming back, which always makes for an interesting spring. But now we we added another really good class. It's going to be interesting to see how those guys who came in early adapt to big-time football because it is an adjustment period. It's not as easy as people think. Pace of play is faster. Guys are bigger. All that good stuff. Everybody's quicker. You don't have, you know, in high school, you might have three exceptional players on a team. So you might have one at every other position. But in college, everybody's good. You might have one or two guys that you can attack, but it's not because he's not good. It's because the guy opposite him is just a little bit better. So it's going to be interesting. Now I have a couple minutes. <laughs> Let's um, let's talk about this women's bracket, SEC bracket. It's going to be interesting because I think we have a chance of playing, I don't know who the winner, but probably we're going to probably play Tennessee in the quarterfinals. And that's going to be an interesting game for all girls. Tennessee has definitely got better since early in the season. And uh, it's going to be a neutral site. Hopefully Ryan gets that um, that cast off our hand. Uh, Not saying it's hurting her, but uh, anything on your hand is going to hinder you a little bit. Because, I don't know, I like to see her attack more with the left hand, although she's obviously, she's the opposite of James Harden. She is right-hand dominant. She wants to go right the majority of the time. Not to say she can't go left, but she is definitely right-hand dominant. And um, I would like to see her get that thing off her hand so when she has to go left, she will feel even more confident with using that left hand when she has to. But I, I like our chance. I like the fact that we avoid South Carolina in the semifinals, although Mississippi State will be coming for revenge. But I think we match up really well with Mississippi State. Oh. They really don't have a dynamic defender like South Carolina does that they can put on Ryan and at least try to slow it down. Um, so I'm looking forward to watching that SEC tournament. I hope it starts today, doesn't it? I think those lower C teams play today and then the whatever they would call that 
It's not the Florida Finals. Or right, tennis be the fourth round, but whatever that game is for the quarterfinals, Tennessee plays whomever. And um, Friday, then we play. I think we played a late game on Saturday. I think we played a seven or eight o'clock game Saturday night. I hope we all tune in and support the women because I think we really have a chance to to win this SEC term. I really do. Uh, we beat Mississippi State, and we played South Carolina really well at home with Howard not having her best game. Uh, so I think there is there's a there is a good chance that we can roll into this NCAA tournament with a little momentum, which will be huge coming off of this Vandy loss um, at Vandy. So, I'm turning into my destination. I covered the two things that I wanted to cover. So, um, I will see you guys next week. Hopefully, the the women at least makes the finals. And uh, we can talk about that and whatever else there is to talk about. All right, guys. Appreciate you listening and watching. Have a good weekend.